Supercars are mad. Italian supercars are often the maddest of all of them, so let's compare two of the most insane Italian supercars ever made. The legendary Lamborghini Diablo and the preposterous Pagani Zonda. One will win, one will lose. Make your predictions now. The 1990s was a golden decade for ridiculous cars. No-name brands such as Vector and Venturi were creating masterpieces, albeit of questionable quality, and big names were getting in on the fun too. Lamborghini was troubled and sought a replacement for the aging Countach, while new rival Pagani planned to take the Italian supercar market by storm. Development of the Diablo began all the way back in 1985. At the time, Jean-Claude Mimran and his brother Patrick were the proud financiers of Lamborghini. They knew that to make money, Lamborghini needed a new car. Something fresh and outrageous to replace the aged Countach. Codenamed Project 132, the only criteria for the new flagship was that it should be fast. The legendary Marcello Gandini was hired to design the body of the car, and everything was looking good for Lamborghini. Except, of course, it wasn't. Profitability had always been hard for the raging bull, and by 1987, it was looking for another home. Chrysler came to the rescue and bought the floundering Mark from the Swiss brothers and sought to make a statement with the Diablo. For reasons beyond my comprehension, Chrysler decided that the Gandini-designed car was too harsh, and that the shape needed softening. The Detroit-based design team then set about sanding off all the angles and sharp edges, eventually settling on the shape we now know as the Diablo. Marcello Gandini was by all accounts unimpressed by this redesign and didn't want his work to go to waste. Interestingly enough, his original design became the base of the very obscure Cizetta V16T. Despite the change of ownership causing turbulence in the company and affecting the development of the car, the Lamborghini Diablo was ready by the start of 1990 and went on sale in January of the same year. While Chrysler may have watered down the styling, they let the Italians sort out the power unit which came in the form of a mid-mounted 5.7-litre V12, producing around 485 brake horsepower and able to propel the car to 62 miles per hour in just 4.5 seconds and up to a top speed of over 200 miles per hour. The Diablo was well-received, generally speaking, and so no time was wasted before beefing up the lineup. 1993 saw the introduction of the Diablo VT, which saw the implementation of an all-new all-wheel drive system, which wasn't so all-new, and actually bore more than a passing resemblance to the system used in the monstrous Lamborghini LM002. By all accounts, this significantly improved the handling of the car. The following year, however, Lamborghini would be shaken up yet again, as Chrysler sold off the brand to an Indonesian firm, Megatech, which also owned Vector at the time, interestingly enough. I don't want to digress too far, but here's some background on Megatech. It's no secret that running a performance car brand profitably can be difficult. However, many believed that something more fishy was afoot at Megatech. Lo and behold, allegations of financial misconduct began springing up. See, the principal of Megatech was a guy by the name of Tommy Suharto, and he allegedly illegally embezzled money from the company to pad out his own bank account. Conveniently, however, he was the son of Indonesian dictator and international strongman General Suharto. Before all of this came out, however, Lamborghini was still trying to sell cars, and so in 1995, they released the Diablo SV. This car was based on the standard Diablo, therefore lacking the all-wheel drive system, but was given more power, now totaling 510 brake horsepower, which sounds safe. However, the story of the Diablo outlasts yet another owner. To cut a long story short, the financial misconduct caught up to Megatech, leading to a series of events that would land Tommy Suharto in prison for murder. In the meantime, though, Lamborghini was sold to Audi for $110 million in 1998, and just one year later, in 1999, they had worked their German magic and come up with the model-defining Diablo GT. 
The GT was about as nuts as you would expect for one of the most outrageous versions of one of the decade's most outrageous cars, sporting a now 6-litre V12, producing 575 brake horsepower and sending all of that power exclusively to the rear wheels. The Diablo GT was a car everyone knew had the express goal of causing serious bodily harm. That same year, a new name would crash the scene. Designed by Horatio Pagani and meant to be the flagship of an all-new Italian supercar maker, the 1999 Pagani Zonda C12 was the start of an era, upsetting the exotic Italian car market right at the turn of the millennium. It's easy to see how. Simply looking at the car is enough to explain its splash. It looked like nothing else in the world. The Zonda didn't need wild colours or wraps to turn heads. The original car, serial number 001, presented to the 1999 Geneva Motor Show with very ordinary silver gloss paint, but the body in question was unusual, to put it mildly. Its short, wedge-shaped nose had a rake like an MPV's windshield and was flanked by four, two on either side, James Bond-style machine guns, although keen onlookers soon realised those were actually meant to be headlights. The cabin looked from the outside as if it had been lifted from a sci-fi fighter jet, or perhaps a Japanese 90s super mini concept car of some kind, and the tail, following from behind the front arches, continued to climb and widen, making the presumably substantial rear wheels look small, simply by virtue of the enormous amount of bodywork now surrounding them. The rear of the car was abruptly cut with a steep chamfer, on which was displayed one of the Zondas and therefore Pagani's most iconic design features, the quad exit exhaust pipes. Emerging from a chrome ring right in the very centre of the car, they remain what most people remember of the Zonda. Of course, the whole car would be rendered useless unless it had a suitably ridiculous engine to shove along the insane body. Don't worry, Pagani had it covered. Cleverly, Pagani chose to source their engines from another manufacturer instead of going through the great expense of developing their own. They dropped AMG's 6-litre V12 into the original Zonda C12, though through the years that engine has seen considerable modification. So, how do these two monsters stack up? As the Diablo ended production in 2001, I will only be using the Zonda C12 for the comparison, as the C12S wasn't unveiled until 2002. By the same token, the best Diablo available in 1999, when the C12 was released, was the GT. Starting with the top trump categories, the Zonda boasted a 6-litre V12, pushing 444 brake horsepower through the rear wheels. The Diablo, meanwhile, also boasted a 6-litre V12, but with a power output of 575 brake horsepower. That being said, the Zonda only weighed around 1,250 kilograms, while the Diablo weighed a portly 1,460. The Zonda managed 0-62 miles an hour in 4 seconds. The Diablo could do it in 3.9, and would go on to a top speed of 210 miles per hour, while the Zonda topped out at a measly 185. Back in 1999, the Diablo GT could set you back north of $250,000, around $450,000 in today's money. The Zonda C12 sold for $325,000 when it first launched just under $600,000 in today's money. Across the entire lifespan of their respective models, the Diablo was in production from 1990 to 2001, a production life of 11 years, in which Lamborghini produced 2,884 cars. Pagani, on the other hand, despite producing the Zonda for 20 years, from 1999 to 2019, has reportedly only produced 140 Zondas to date, across nearly 40 variants. There's just one more thing to compare, and this is where I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. That's coolness. For me, the Zonda wins this point. The spaceship looks and the sheer audacity to launch such a car under a name nobody had ever heard of makes up for the lack of power and the lower top speed and the higher price. It's simply a cooler car. If you enjoyed this video, you will love this one about the equally ridiculous and equally Italian, surprisingly enough, Bugatti EB110. There is also a link to my full video about the Pagani Zonda in the description below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.